I feel like this is something I would do when I'm older. Like, I do this to my family all the time. <laughs> That's accurate. <laughs> Today we're talking about evaporation. It rained in Savannah earlier and created some puddles all on these sidewalks, as you can see right here with this dark spot. But in the course of the three hours I've been out here interviewing people for the following video, this dark spot has gradually dried up. What's causing the water to dry up? What's happening at the molecular level of evaporation? I think depending on how hot it is, I could be wrong, yeah. I would assume they change states. Uh, the heat, the heat being able to, uh, I don't know, dry it out or something, and then it turns into like a vapor. Well, I mean, the, the atoms are getting further apart because there's a phase change, so let's go into a gas. By the movement and separation of molecules to the point that they do not collect together. Are they speeding up? And that's why they can't stay in the same state that it was beforehand? Energy. <laughs> heat. Yeah, I think heat. Uh, the heat. The heat, yes. Yeah. Do they start shaking? Yes. Whoa, it's okay. 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 So what exactly does it mean to break up two water molecules? Well, we know that a water molecule is made up of H2O. There's one large oxygen and two smaller hydrogens at a 105 degree angle. Because water is a polarized molecule, that means that two water molecules can be attracted towards each other. And the bond that forms between them is called a hydrogen bond. If these represent two molecules of H2O, the yellow tape between them is the hydrogen bond. At first, they're pretty locked in place. The hydrogen bond is pretty strong. But as you start to add energy, they start vibrating more and more and more. And then when you add too much energy, they break apart. When they break apart, it releases a molecule it goes flying up into the sky. That's when evaporation happens. When they're heated up, they move very quickly, I believe. Very quickly? Yeah. And, uh, and by doing that, they break apart into a different form. It's yep. Instead of water, it breaks apart into gas. Yep. Evaporation is just a surface process, whereas boiling can take place within the entire body of liquid. Now let's talk about the different ways we can make water evaporate faster. Increase temperature. Um, heat. Heat. Add heat. Sunlight or something. Yeah. Um, man, that's actually this is uh, friction. I don't know. A hair dryer. Heat. That, that's actually no. That's a great one. That thing is right here. Blowing around us. Wind and air. Wind. <laughs> if you put one cup of water in both of them, which one would evaporate all the way first? The flat one. Flat one. Because, because all the water has more surface area. Which one evaporates first? That one because it has one. more surface area, so it has more ability to... Yep. So, so, what's the difference between these two? Oh, it's spread out. And the last one, it's a pretty difficult one. It's like the hardest of them all. Oh, man. So, <laughs> let's say you go to Arizona. Things evaporate really fast. If you put a bucket of water out, it will actually evaporate a lot faster than if you put water in a bucket here. The dry heat. It's dry. The, humi it's dry the humid here, dry heat over there. And like weighs it down, I don't know. <laughs> yes. It weighs it down and so it's applying a... Pressure? It's applying a pressure. Oh, pressure? Ooh, that was a good one. Lower the pressure. Yeah. So we got, okay, we got one for we me. Got, Technically we got eight, one. Yep. And then I kind of had like a hint. <laughs> All right. I said air pressure. The and obvious pressure. way is to add heat. And when most people say heat, they mean something like sunlight. The second way we can see happening right here. Obviously there's wind blowing on the tape. But another name for this would be turbulent flow. Anytime you disturb a liquid and cause you know little ripples or waves to go across it, or if you lightly blow on it, that's called a turbulent flow. This turbulence adds kinetic energy to the liquid and thus causes the surface molecules to have more energy punching against them, and eventually one will snap off. Pow! The third way to increase the rate of evaporation is to increase the surface area. If you have these two containers, this one is deep and 
not so wide across, but this one is pretty shallow, but very large. The container with a larger surface area will evaporate first because there aren't as many surface layers to evaporate. And finally, increasing the humidity will actually slow down evaporation. And when it reaches 100% humidity, that is if there's fog or rain, evaporation cannot occur. So if you decrease the humidity, say somewhere out in a dry climate, like in Arizona or a desert, the rate of evaporation will increase. All in all, evaporation is a process that occurs on the molecular level of a liquid. And it differs from boiling in that it only takes place on the surface, not within the entire body of liquid. The four main ways that you can accelerate evaporation are to increase the heat, increase the turbulent flow or the kinetic energy, decrease the humidity, or increase the surface area. So the next time you see a puddle of water, consider all the factors that are putting energy into it. Which of those factors do you think have the greatest impact on breaking up the bonds and accelerating the rate of evaporation? Wow. It's all about evaporation. Cool. It's all about cool. breaking those bonds. Makes sense. Right yeah. Now we're smarter. Cool. Cool, Thanks. thank you. Right. 10 points on Jeopardy. Cool. <laughs> wow. Pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. That's everything. Thank you very much. Thanks for letting me be a part of your cool Please. study thing. Of course. Pow. What is heat? Heat is anything that causes a change in temperature. Well, heat is it, it temperature. Oh, got it. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Wow. That is really cool. cool.